That's why it's a competitive regard. That's why it's a competitive regard. Because in our hearts, we're thinking, if I had more of it, I could solve more problems. If I had more of it, I wouldn't have these problems. And so it competes with God. See, we ought to say, because I have God, these problems are going to be solved. But instead, our hearts and minds are thinking, money is the solve to the problem. The disciples had this problem. You know, Jesus said, you give those 5,000 men and the women and children something to eat. And they said, oh, they picked 200 denarii. They had money on their mind. We know how much money it will take. And Jesus in essence said, oh, it's not going to take this much. We've got the Lord. What do you have? Oh, my Lord, be too busy. What is that? Bring them here. The Lord takes the little bit that we have and does miracles with it. Somebody say amen. <laughs> Jesus didn't look at the money. The disciples were looking at the money. Jesus didn't look at the money. He looked at God. He said, God, you bless what I have right now. So it was ridiculously, ridiculously insufficient. Ridiculously deficient. But your power can change that with no money. And he did, didn't he? See, we've got to straighten out our hearts. This, what I'm going to give you is a list of four barriers, four barriers to the blessings of God. And we've got to, get, we've got to uproot these barriers from our hearts. All four of these barriers come from our hearts. All right, you ready for this? First of all, 1 Timothy chapter 6, beginning in the ninth verse. Here's the first one. It says, for those who desire to be rich, those who desire to be rich. That's number one. A desire to be rich. Somebody says, is that wrong? We want to be rich? Well, first of all, let's talk about what rich means. Here in America, most people are rich compared to the rest of 